So thankful for all of his precious promises and what he means to us. And uh, he's, he's good to us. And he's faithful to us. And yeah, I'm stalling this morning because I'm, <laughs> I'm ca- caught up here betwixt a couple of things. So uh, I'm just thankful for God and what he means to us. Can we just stand one more time? Can you just lift your hands and praise the Lord? Uh, I'm trying to make sure that I'm in the right direction, what he wants me to do for this service this morning. So just lift your hands and praise him this morning. Talked a lot about the blood this morning. Thank you for that blood. Thank you for that blood. Lord, I'm thankful for that blood that was shed for me on Calvary, God. Thankful for the great price, dear God, that you paid for us, Lord. And I know, Lord God, that you're faithful to us, Lord. Thankful for the blessings that we we have in, in serving you, dear God. Oh, Lamb of God, I'm thankful this morning. Thankful this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lots been said about the blood this morning. And I'm thankful for the blood. And as I, I was, they were singing, I, I thought, man, I, Lord, take me in a different direction than what I planned. We're going we're gonna to continue our series on submission, but we'll probably continue that next week. And we're going to talk about submission in our marriage and our, our, our spouses. But as Sister Mary began to sing on the blood and began to lead songs on the blood, I'm like, Lord, must you want me to preach on the blood this morning? Brother Paul and I were talking the other day, and I said, I preached a, a message a while back on, on praise. And it's just been on my heart. And I said, I'm, I'm going to preach it here again real soon. Well, I am, right about now. It's just, it, just, it just hit me. It just came, came on me there as, as Sister Rhonda was singing as I was looking for something. It just popped out to me so turn sorry sister amy (laughs) i got her all mess she does great to prepare for my messages and and slides and scriptures and all that psalms chapter 42 and verse number five if sister amy if you're wanting to look for a slide it's posture of praise psalms 42 verse five i'm thankful for his presence this morning Lord makes me nervous when he does this to me, but here we go. I I was ready to talk to you about being submitted to your husbands, women. I wanted to talk to you this morning about being submissive to us men. and Talk to men tonight about being submissive to your wives. And we're going to get there because that's very important in our Christian walk. Last Sunday night, we talked about being submissive to our employers and and on our jobs. And uh, we have to understand something, that submission and commitment come, goes much further than the four walls of this church. As I said last week, uh, we spend more time on our job than we do here. We probably spend more time on our job than we do at home, uh, but we spend outside of our job, we spend more time with our spouses than we do with those that we attend church with. And uh, so that, that is very important. We're going to continue that, our, our study through First Peter. Uh, but uh, we're just going to follow the direction of the Lord this morning. And uh, Brother Tyler just came up and asked me, he said, could we have a prayer line in the altar service uh, today? And I, I believe that would be very fitting. We're going to do that. We're going to end this service today with a, a prayer line uh, in our altar service. But Psalms 42 and 5, if you're nervous, say amen. Amen. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted? in me could somebody be asking themselves that question this morning psalmist not asking anybody else anybody ever talk to yourself (laughs) he was talking to himself he was questioning himself why art thou cast down oh my soul you know what he was saying something i say to me myself all the time what's wrong with you what's wrong with you why art thou cast down why is thou why Art thou disquieted in me? Listen to what he said. Hope thou in God. Psalmist was very good at encouraging himself in the Lord. He was viewing that here. He said, For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. A lot has been said about the blood that was shed for us at Calvary this morning. But I believe that the emphasis that the Lord is trying to get across to us today 
is, yes, the importance of the blood that He shed for us, but more so than the importance of the blood that He shed for us, our response for the blood that was shed for us. Our response to what He has done for us. As I said Wednesday night, we were half dead, laying in a ditch of despair, stripped by Satan, left there to die. But then Jesus came. But then Jesus shed his blood. Jesus took that cross to Calvary. Jesus died for me. Jesus paid the price that I may be set free. He paid the price that I may be delivered. He paid the price. So what the psalmist is telling us here is there's no reason for us to be cast down. Think about what they were singing this morning. It reaches to the highest mountain. It's there when I remember what he's done for me. It's there when I think about the price that is paid. It's there when I'm living the high life, if you will, uh, when I'm living my mountaintop experience uh, and I'm rejoicing and nobody's got to probe me and prompt me uh, to get me because I remember what he's done for me. Uh, he said the blood is there. The blood is there. But he also said it reaches to the lowest valley. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? The blood is still there. The blood is still as powerful as it's ever been. The blood has still been shed for you. And even when you're in that lowest moment, he said it reaches to the lowest valley. It's the same day after day. It never loses its power. So, so I don't know. You might. It seems like Sister Mary's on a mountaintop this morning maybe because she's rejoicing with no problems, no, no resolve, no hold back. It's just passion. Or maybe she's just learned even in the valleys to worship that way. But I'm just using that as an example this morning. She's standing up on that mountain and she said, come on, people, praise God. But maybe that's not you this morning. You're not up here on this mountain. You're down here in this valley. And you're like, oh, Whew. I'm here, preacher. <laughs> I got here. I ask people in visitation all the time. I say, how you doing? I'm here. Another day, because usually when I visit them, they're in some hard place, usually a hospital room. And I've thought to myself, dummy, why don't you ask somebody how they're doing when they're laying in the hospital bed? But I'm not asking them how they're doing physically. I know how they're doing physically. They need, they need, they got an IV in their arm for a reason. But how are you? How's your soul? And so maybe you're there this morning physically, you're down. Mentally, you're stressed. Ask yourself this question. Why are you down? It reaches to the lowest valley. He can reach to the lowest valley. I love this. You're standing and I'm not. It's usually the other way around. It reaches right where you're at. So the psalmist said, why are you down? Why, why have you allowed circumstances to affect you. Just lift your hands and pray so you can be seated and then I'll go ahead and preach. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood this morning, Lord. Thankful for the price that's been paid for us. And I need you right now, God. Hallelujah. Your pastor is fixing a shotgun preach. You need to pray. Father God, speak to us. Speak to us, dear God, fresh from the altar, fresh from your word, God. That that you've placed in our care, God. Mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah. And oh, Lord, that you're faithful, faithful. Have your way today, Holy Ghost. We ask it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to God. Keep praising, but you can be seated if you'd like. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Why would you be in such a state? Hope thou in God, for I shall get praise. I shall yet praise him for the help 
of his countenance. I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Have you noticed, if you've not noticed, you've heard me talk about it a lot. I, I say it a lot, that our situations determine our expression. You can see that if you gathered with anybody yesterday to watch the ball game. You could tell without even looking at the score if their team was winning or losing. Right? By their response. And you could tell the same way in life uh, uh, by people, uh, whether they're winning or losing. Uh, there's a, a song by a group called Mercy Me. It's a contemporary uh, song, and, and the title of the song is Even If. Uh, and in, in that song, he wrote that song. He was inspired uh, to write that song in a time of illness that his son was going through, uh, and, and he was facing some things. Uh, but in that song, he said, it's my position. It's my calling. Uh, it's what I'm supposed to do night after night. I, I get up on the stage uh, to encourage others, to let others know everything's going to be all right. He, he said, I, I, I let them know these things. In that song, he says, sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. But in that song, Brother Charlie, he said, but right now I'm losing bad. And he said, but my position is to encourage others. Uh, he said, but tonight I just can't. Uh, he, he said, the, the circumstances of life uh, have gotten me to a place that I, 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 I can't do what I'm even meant to do and meant to be in. Uh, and I can't help but to think that there's sitting uh, some here under the sound of my voice. Uh, that there's a great purpose that we have. Uh, there is a great purpose. Uh, you were born to praise the Lord. Uh, you were born to give God glory uh, and to magnify Him. But there's some situations, uh, there's some diagnosis, uh, there's some uh, circumstances, uh, there, there's some decrees, uh, there's some uh, 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 things that's come down the pike uh, that maybe has got you in the place of that songwriter uh, to say, I understand that you win some, you lose some. Uh, there's good days and there's bad days. I love to tell people all the time, they say, How your, how's your day going? You having a good day? I said, every day's a good day. Some just better than others. It's all about perspective, really. Uh, but can that, does that mean that pastor never has a bad day? Oh, yeah. We have some bad days. Uh, is there ever a time that I, I'm like, I can't get up there, Lord? I, I, I know I'm supposed to stand up on that platform uh, and, and encourage people to carry on uh, and to press on. Uh, but can I tell you, there's been times in this walk, uh, there's been times during uh, uh, my calling as pastor, as evangelist, uh, and, and recently, I guess, missionary, uh, that I've stood up uh, on the platform uh, and I'm standing up there saying, Lord, uh, I don't have anything to say to them. Circumstances have drained me. I may have even walked up there and they saw man, he looks down. I've had people look at me before and say, Preacher, are you okay? I wasn't hiding it too good, Sister Gilda. Are you all, you all right? And I couldn't look at them, Sister Joyce, and say, yeah, I'm fine. But I would say, I'll be all right. It'll be okay. It is well with my soul. But he said, I get up there and it's my job to encourage. I just, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. And so there's times that we get to that place in our lives, in our Christian walk, that we know what we're supposed to be doing. But we can't just, just can't for some reason muster up the praise. But we forget something in those moments. We're blinded by something in those moments. We're blinded by the situation. We're blinded by the circumstance. We're blinded by the fact that we do not praise God according to circumstance. We don't praise God in, in accordance to, to what we're going through or what we're facing. Uh, but posture is very important to us and how we position ourselves and what we do uh, for ourselves. So I've titled this this morning uh, a posture of praise because uh, if there's anything that's important to us as Christians, it's our praise. Matter of fact, you find in the, the Old Testament when they're going to war uh, and they're about to go to war, Brother Brian, Brian McDonald preached this message years ago when he preached for us in Oklahoma. He, he said a title of his message was Let Judah Go First. 
And, and as they went to battle and as they was going to face that battle, uh, they sent Judah first. That was the first tribe that they sent. Uh, and, and there was a purpose behind that. Uh, and the purpose was uh, of that uh, was when you look up the name Judah. And that name Judah means praise. Uh, we've always uh, got to let praise go first. Uh, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, uh, no matter what surrounds you, uh, no matter if it's a mountaintop or the valley, uh, praise should always come first. Uh, when you kneel down to pray uh, in your prayer closet in the morning, uh, can I tell you, it's not the first thing that come out of your mouth is God give me. Uh, that should never be the first thing out of your mouth uh, when you go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, but the first thing that should come out of your mouth uh, is, Lord, I want to take this opportunity uh, to praise you uh, for what you mean to me. I want to praise you uh, that you didn't leave my soul in hell. I want to praise you uh, that you brought me off that path uh, that I was walking down. I want to praise you uh, that you've delivered me, uh, that you've set me free. Uh, if he's broken you from any addictions, uh, just go ahead and say it, Lord, I want to praise you that I'm not addicted uh, to nicotine any longer. I want to praise you uh, that I'm not addicted to, to alcohol anymore. I want to praise you uh, that I'm not addicted to pornography any longer. I want to praise you uh, that I am not uh, bound by the elements and the things of this world. I want to praise you uh, that I am not controlled uh, by the influences of this world any longer. He's worthy of our praise. When we begin to let praise go first, changes everything you can't praise God very long and stay in the wrong posture but that posture of praise sets the tone if you will that posture of praise that position of praise that's why the psalmist told us to in Psalms 100 how to enter the house of God with praise with thanksgiving we, we come in, you, you, you may be approaching the house of God, and, and I understand the week gets heavy. We, we, we spent this week trying to practice what was preached last Sunday night, right? Being committed and submitted to our employer. And there's times this week you wanted to knock him out. There's times this week you wanted to give her a piece of your mind. But you said, no, Pastor, preach that I need to be committed and submit it to my employer no matter how crabby they are, how mean they are, how nasty they are. No matter what they say or do, I'm supposed to take the high road. So you've been doing that, and that's got heavy this week. And, and, and that begins to get heavy because you're taking on some stuff. Uh, it, it seems to bring us, as people, uh, it seems to bring us some relief uh, as if we get it, as if we can give it back. I've watched people, and I ask them after they have all their rants, say, you feel better now? Some of them say, yeah, I feel, feel good. Thanks for letting me get that off my chest. Some tell you, no. But, but we think if, if I can take it and then give it back, I'll be all right. But when we spend our time seem taking it, taking it, taking it, uh, and, and flesh saying, give it back, give it back, give it back, uh, and the Spirit says, I'm sanctifying you. I, I'm working with you. I, I'm dealing with you. Uh, and, and you're walking this walk. Uh, so I, I'm not talking this morning about folks that have no desire to grow uh, because if you don't have any desire to grow, uh, it's not going to mean anything to you anyway. Uh, I can stand up here and preach until I fall out. Uh, it's not going to do you a bit of good. Uh, but those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, uh, those that have ears to hear. Uh, let them hear what the Spirit is saying into the church. Uh, and you're saying, I got big ears and they're listening closely uh, because I want to know uh, how to possess this vessel in holiness and righteousness. How to be an overcomer. Scripture tells us that we're more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror and I want to be that. It's all about posture. How many has been taught in life about your posture? Anybody's mom ever tell you about your chair, all fours? I always had the tendency of leaning back in my chair and all fours. Sit up straight. Anybody ever get that? Sit up straight. We get those things. Why? We think, man, what, what is that all about? Because posture is important. Because posture, a person's posture will tell you a lot about that person. Listen, this is the definition of posture. It's the position of a person's body when standing or sitting a particular way uh, or dealing with or considering something. It's an approach or an attitude. It's an approach or an attitude. So it's not just the way you stand. 
It's not just the way you sit, uh, but it's the way you approach things. It's your attitude about things. Uh, so when I'm talking about a posture of praise, uh, I'm not necessarily talking to you about how you physically stand uh, or how you physically sit uh, because you can praise God standing up. You can praise God sitting down. There was a Christian comedian who gave all the different ways that people praise God and he gave a meaning. Him. You can look that up uh, and see all of those different positions. Uh, you can praise God laying on your face, laying on your back. Uh, you can praise God laying in the bed. Uh, hey, you can praise God standing in the shower, driving down the road, sitting on a church pew, uh, standing in a choir. There's all kinds uh, of postures and positions that you can be in, uh, but most important is your approach. Uh, what is your approach to worship? Uh, what is your approach to praise? Uh, what is your attitude uh, about what seems to be the theme of the day. What's your attitude about the blood? What's your attitude about the price that was paid at Calvary for you? Uh, what is your approach uh, to the things that God has done for you? Uh, and so for us as humans, posture uh, can provide a significant amount of important information uh, through nonverbal communication. What does that mean? Uh, I can tell uh, whether you're going through something or whether you're not going through something and you don't have to say a word. My posture by the way that you express yourself through body language. There are people that study body language. You can look, they can look at you and they can ask you a question. You answer them, they'll look back and say, you're lying to me. How do they know I was lying to you? You think you covered it up real good because they know by something that you did with your posture. I'm not going to tell you because I know when you're lying to me. They know by what you do if you're lying or not. And, and so they can tell by that, that posture. So it's, it's that nonverbal communication. Psychologists uh, have studied and they've said that it also demonstrated the effects uh, of body posture on emotions. Currently, uh, many studies have shown that certain patterns of body movement uh, are inactive uh, or specific uh, to emotions. Uh, so your body movement uh, uh, depends on emotions. Your body responds. A message goes to the brain. Uh, it comes from somewhere and goes somewhere. You say, I don't believe that. I, I, I can cover up my emotions. You don't know if I'm going through anything or not. Uh, let me come out there and step on your foot. And immediately an emotion is going to come. Your posture is going to change. There, there's going to be a body movement that changes uh, immediately. Uh, so we see this and we understand this uh, and see that there's effects in our posture and our emotions. Uh, and what we find, they found through studies, uh, is that pattern of the body's movement uh, that they begin to go and they're, they're specifically tied into our emotions and what moves us. Uh, so can I ask you this morning, uh, what motivates you? What triggers you? Uh, what takes a, a hold of your posture? Uh, what what is causing you to respond to this and respond to that? Remember what the psalmist asked. He began to ask himself, why are you getting yourself in this position? Hope thou in God. What was he telling himself? He's saying, you've got your mind off of the point. Exodus chapter 17, beginning in verse 8, we read, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim and Moses and Joshua said unto Joshua, Choose us out men. Go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill and with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him and he sat there on. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua disconfided Amalek and the people with the edge of the sword. The Lord said unto Moses, Write these for a memorial in a book and rehearse in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. We see something in this story, exactly what I'm talking to you about. It's about posture. There was a posture in which Moses stood in, and as long as he kept that posture, there was victory. And what was that posture? Hands raised. Hands raised. 
My overseer in Oklahoma, when I pastored there, he preached a message, uh, and, and he, he entitled it. Uh, he came by and preached for our, we had a missions congregation, uh, some islanders from the Marshallese Islands that used our church in the afternoon, and he preached one of the services there, and I went to it. Uh, and he was preaching about uh, those hands, and he used this verse. Uh, he said that you'll notice something, uh, three things that took place there with hands uh, in, in this story. Uh, and you find that Moses' hands were raised, and as long as his hands were raised, uh, there was victory. Uh, but we also find that there was hands engaged, Joshua and those that were fighting. Uh, they were engaged in the battle. It was Joshua's uh, position to do something. He had a posture, and it was a fighting posture. Uh, and Moses' uh, job and his posture was to keep his hands raised. Uh, that was his assignment. That was his duty. Uh, but Aaron and her also had a responsibility. Uh, they had to have hands that upheld. Uh, so we find here in the story hands engaged, hands raised, uh, and hands that uphold. Uh, so everybody's got a position. Everybody uh, has got a lane to travel in. Everybody's got a posture uh, to uphold. And Joshua knew his posture. Uh, he knew that he was fighting. Uh, he knew. He did not know uh, everything that was going to come. We know as we've read the Bible that ultimately uh, Joshua took the position position of Moses. He stepped into that. But at this moment in his life, uh, that was not his posture. Uh, his posture was not to be the leader, uh, but his posture was to be the one engaged in the battle. Uh, so he fought there and he got there uh, and he did what he was supposed to do. Uh, and Moses kept his hand raised, uh, but it said Moses' hands got heavy. He wanted to keep them up because he found out when they got heavy as they went down, he watched the scene change right in front of his eyes. There, there's much. This has preached a lot of pastor's appreciations because there's some reality to it. When that pastor's head, hands begin to get heavy and our posture begins to change, it doesn't just affect us. It affects the fight that's going on, the fight that you're engaged in. You're, you're engaged in spiritual warfare every day, church. You're, you're, you're engaged in real battles. And I never want to stand on this platform and in this pulpit and lessen the battle that any of you may be in. There's some that's fighting against addiction. There's some that's fighting against principality. There's some that's fighting against uh, uh, overcoming some situations. You're fighting just to be everything that you uh, God wants you to be. It, you're, it's a fight for you uh, to even get to church sometimes. You realize uh, that the thieves come not but for the steal, kill, and destroy. The devil's put a target on you, uh, and you're fighting. Uh, but thank God you're fighting. Uh, a soldier in the army of the Lord's going to fight, uh, and you're engaged in that battle, uh, but you, you're doing that, and you're engaged in it, and that's your posture. Uh, you say, I'm fighting, I'm doing it, uh, but I know what you're doing, uh, just what they were doing. I can't help but to think uh, that Joshua glanced up every now and then. When, when he saw that things weren't going just right, he glanced up. Not any doubt in Moses, because he loved Moses, he respected him, but just see where his posture was. And you know what he could have said? I knew it. He's getting tired. His hands are going down. His hands, his hands are slowly going down. Do we, we, did Joshua stop? Look up at the mountain and say, Moses, get them hands back up. I'm losing down here because you've lost your posture. No, Joshua just kept fighting. Why? Because his position uh, was to fight. Uh, his position was not to take a pulpit and preach back to Moses. Uh, he said, I just got to keep doing uh, what I'm doing. Why? Uh, because his posture was a posture of engagement. Uh, there was somebody that was up there with Moses. Uh, there was Aaron and her that was standing there beside Moses. Uh, and when they saw his hands go down, uh, they knew that Moses was tired. Moses wanted to keep his hands up, uh, but he was tired. Uh, and that was their position to undertake and to uphold that man of God. Why? Because it was very important. God hinged everything on the battle for the fact that he had to be in the right posture. And so if he was there, as long as his hands was up, there was victory. So when everybody took their correct posture and everybody focused on what they were supposed to be doing, it got tough sometimes. It says that the battle shifted. Because there's going to be seasons, there's going to be shifts, there's going to be times that we we just get out of posture just a little bit, and we say, "Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, get back up." I'd be one tired dude if I wasn't. I don't do that. I 
can't do that physically. Even if Brother Charlie and Brother Bob said, I'll follow you around everywhere you go and make sure they stay in. Messing up with the sound. They're with me everywhere I go. Seems silly, doesn't it? That, that physically, that I'm going there. But no, I, I'm on that mountaintop. I stand up here Sunday morning. I, I've, I've got those hands lifted so you can win the battle. And I'm standing here, and you're going home. I just wave at you. I just keep standing here because i got to stay on the mountaintop. See you all next week. See you all tonight. And I'll be standing right here. And Charlie and Bob's going to stay with me. They're going to hold my hands up even while you're gone. And throughout the week, you come back, and they're thinking his right guard doesn't turn left. Right? And I'm because I'm still standing here. No, that's not what it's, it's saying. That physically, I'm not going to do that. But spiritually, it's up to me as a pastor to stay on that mountaintop and to keep those hands right. Do I always stay in that posture? I sure try to. That's not what I ask you, Pastor. Do you always stay in that posture? No, my arms get tired. I get tired, and I begin to lose posture. But thank God that he's put those in our lives and say, come on, I'm here to uplift. I'm here to encourage. I'm here to make sure you keep those hands up, a word of encouragement. It's not always a sermon. It's not always this, that, and the other. But it's things that come to make sure these hands have got to stay up. We can't. It didn't say that. Aaron and her said, listen, I know you're supposed to keep your hands up, but there's something I want to run past you. <laughs> and then they begin to pull down on his arms. There's times for that, but this was not the time for that. They were engaged in battle, and Aaron and her understood that. Uh, they said, it's not time for me to pull down on his arms, but it's time for me to push up on his arms. So what I'm telling you here is everybody had a posture in this story, and they understood that posture, so they got in that posture. Uh, and, and that posture that is very important, uh, whether it's engaged in battle, whether it's upholding, uh, or whether it's keeping them raised, that posture is praise. Uh, it's magnifying. It's honoring. It's uplifting. Uh, it's glorifying, uh, and it's exalting the name of the Lord. Uh, and so we find that uh, it's very important that you and I uh, find that posture uh, that we're supposed to be in uh, and stay in that posture, praying with always, with all prayer and supplication, uh, giving God praise in everything, uh, praising God and magnifying God in the good times, uh, in the bad times, uh, on the mountaintops, uh, in the valleys, uh, to, to, as, as a pastor uh, for me to lead by example, uh, to give you something to follow and that you follow that uh, and understand that we have an obligation uh, and a responsibility uh, because our uh, posture is telling others uh, not just something about us, but something about our God. The way that we respond. Listen, people are not reading the Bible, but they're reading your body language. They're not reading the book, but you are. And you've got to make sure that the book gets in you so it will in turn get in your posture. And so that's why it's important to be submitted to your employer. It's important to be submitted to your spouse. It's important to be walking in submission and walking in all of these things that we've talked about for the last several weeks because our posture is telling everything, people everything they need to know. So what is your posture? It's not about what you hear. It's not about what you're hearing because you've heard a bunch about the blood this morning. <laughs> Amen. You've heard there's power in the blood. You've been asked the question, are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Have this and it just everything that the blood, what the blood means to us and the importance of the price that was paid on Calvary's Hill for you and I so we understand all that. So it's not what you're hearing week after week. It's not what you're seeing when you take out that Bible and you read it throughout the week. And it's not so much really what you're saying even when you go to the Lord in prayer and begin to talk to God and begin to talk to others, but really is what it's all about. Uh, is what you're letting go first uh, when, when you're facing something. Uh, I know we say, well, I'm praying about it, uh, but before we pray about it, uh, Scripture is telling us uh, that we need to praise. What is that? Why does that mean anything? Because we're setting the tone. We're positioning ourselves so we can pray the right way. 
Do you know why we talk about praying through? Because many times people get to praying and they got to pray until they get themselves straightened out. And when they get themselves straightened out, that's when they can really pray. But if we'll begin to let praise go first and set the posture and begin to set the tone in what we're doing, that we'll understand something. We've positioned ourselves not just to pour out, but to receive. When you, when you notice and you see uh, uh, in, uh, in old games of cowboys and Indians and cops and robbers, uh, w- when they took them and they finally uh, uh, got the gun on them or they captured them or they came to them, uh, what did they do? Something to reach for, they, they can't. They're going to be very hard. Unless they got a third arm, they don't know about. I've got them right where I, I want them. Their hands are in the air, so they're they're in a posture of two things: of giving yourself surrender, as you say, giving yourself to the Lord, but also when you do that, you're ready to receive. For them, it's ready to receive the consequences of their actions, uh, 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 to take be taken into custody. For, for us as Christians, uh, when we do that, when we come and we lift our hands, uh, it, it's a twofold thing as well. It's surrender, uh, but God knows what's in our hands. Nothing's in my hands. I've given it to God. I, I've yielded it to God. But then they look at him and they ask him, you got anything on your person, right? I wanted to be a cop, sorry. You got anything on your person? Yes. Right back here in the center of my back, I've got a 9 millimeter. And so they take that. But they can't pull it on them because their hands are in the air. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about posture. When we get in that posture, uh, God can begin to do something in our lives. He can begin, when we begin to come clean, we begin to come honest with God, and God begins to look and say, all right, you got your hands in the air, uh, and you're ready to receive. You're ready to receive direction. You're ready to receive instruction. Uh, you're ready to listen. Uh, you were running. Uh, they were running until they said freeze. They threw their hands in the air. Uh, you were running from God. You were doing, uh, uh, you was there trying to do what you wanted to do, uh, but God said, hands up, and you finally said, all right, I'm tired of running. So you threw your hands in the air. You still had weapons on you. You still had an ability to fight it all, but you said, I'm tired of fighting. I'm ready to surrender. Anybody ever been there? I want to be in that place and say, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of going. I've got weapons to keep fighting. I've got gunpowder to keep on going. Yeah, I've got a gun in my back. I've got one in my shoe. I've got three knives in my pocket. I've got some brass knuckles in my other pocket. But oh, And what am I saying? I'm not reaching for that that I have on me because I'm tired of fighting. I'm yielded to you. I'm yielded to your will. I'm yielded to your way. I've got a lot of things that I can rebel against, it, but I'm tired of rebelling. I've changed my posture. It's not a posture of running from God anymore. It's not a posture of fighting against the will of God anymore. It's not a posture of kicking against the pricks any longer, but it's this. taking my hands off of it. I'm giving it to you, Lord. What do you want to do with me? That's there, and that's there, and that's there. So what do they do? They start removing it, right? That's called sanctification in the spiritual realm. I want God to begin to say, all right, that's gone. Those are gone. And you know what we do all the while? Used to, we would fight back and reach for it. Nope, that's mine. That, that's, that's my weapon to fight that off. We'd fight off conviction. Fight off. I told you I've preached on posture of praise, but not this. That's over there somewhere. This is where I feel the Lord taking me right now. We fought it off, fought it off, fought it off. We didn't reach for it. messing up the sound equipment but they're there pastor you're getting slow you're getting boring I got a roast in the crock pot you should have preached what you was going to preach hang on our posture must change because if your posture still stays the same you're still reaching for your defenses 
You're still reaching for your mechanisms. You're still reaching for your contradictions. So many times the Lord's trying to talk to us or somebody's trying to instruct us or disciple us. Well, this is what I think. The Lord's saying, listen. Have you seen the little commercial? I'd have beat him out of his frame if it was my son. The little boy mama's trying to talk to him, and he shakes his head, and he looks up. Listen, Linda. Well, he'd have got his butt wore out. But that's what God is speaking to us. Listen. Remember what I told you? He gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. We're, we're, we're trying to, to, to have our defenses and trying to come. But, but, wait a minute. That, that's not the way I see it. And, that's what I, and, and we spend our whole life doing that. Uh, but then there's just something. Uh, it gets us to that moment. Uh, and we don't understand when that moment will be. But I believe that moment is here for somebody this morning. Uh, that they said, I've reached uh, for all of my weapons, all of my defenses, all of my responses. Uh, and I've still got plenty of comebacks. Uh, I've still got plenty of ammunition. Uh, I've still got everything that I need to fight it. Uh, but I'm tired of fighting fighting it. I'm tired of being a posture of defending my stance. I'm tired of defending the fact, well, I believe there's a God, but I don't believe He's for me. I believe God moves, but I don't believe He'll move for me. I believe God calls, but I don't think He can use me. Whatever that stance is that you've taken, you've taken that defensive stance. You put that guard up. you got all these walls up around you and saying, I'm ready to stand firm on this posture of emotions, of things that's been brought up ideologies uh, and things that's been fed in our mind uh, our whole life. Uh, circumstances uh, has molded us and made us uh, to get into this mechanism of where we're at. Uh, and listen, life is not fair. Your situation was not right. There's those of you who are here, just getting real this morning, were abused as children. That was not your fault. There's those of you who are a product of Parents that were alcoholics and drug addicts, maybe caught up in the cold and witchcraft. None of that was your fault. But it has molded you and made you and put you. Puts you in a position and a posture that's always angry. It's always ready to defend and always mad and always holding people at a distance. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. Don't speak to me like that. Don't tell me what I need to do. Nobody's telling you what you need to do. Have you ever seen anybody watch an episode of Cops? Hang on, buddy. Chill out, right? You see them, they're trying to get them to settle down. Because they're tweaking. They're, they're out of their mind because of whatever they're addicted to. Or whatever. And a lot of times they're on nothing. They're on nothing. They're just strung out on circumstances of life. They're stressed to the max, and, and they have lost it. And there's some of you here this morning. Nothing of your control sent you and spiraled you down a road of not just addictions to, to substance and not just addiction to, to, to things, but bitterness. It's brought you to a posture of I've got to defend myself. I'm the only one that can do it. If I'm going to make it, I've got to do it. So you're always in that, I don't even know a fighting posture. Give me a fighting posture, Paul, so I can copy it. He's tried to teach me that at the gym and then stands back and laughs at me. But we're always in that, that posture of defending ourselves. But there's one here this morning that you don't have to defend yourself against because he shed his blood for you. You've met the one. You've felt the presence of the one here this morning. It says you don't have to defend yourself against me because I've already defended you. You don't have to come against me like that. You don't have to keep uh, 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 coming against my word and coming against the beliefs and coming against uh, the things of the word because everything I did in that word, I did it for you. I did it for you. You don't have to run any longer. You don't have to fight any longer. I don't know about you, but that was a wonderful day when I felt that. When I felt that presence of the Holy Ghost putting conviction on me. I don't know about you, but I felt that. 
I still had a lot of stuff on my person, amen. I, I still had a lot of mechanisms, a lot of hang-ups, a lot of struggles, but I didn't reach for a one of them. But I began to point them out through prayer and praise to God, Sister Gilda, one by one. I got a nine there. <laughs> I got a switchblade there. I got some brass knuckles there. In my shoes, another one. And just, just begin to come clean. God's looking for somebody this morning to realize to realize it's time to come clean no matter what you've been through no matter what you faced no matter where you're at no matter what circumstances have dictated no matter what they've said you'll always be that way you're a victim of circumstance and it, it'll never change um, you was born a crack baby so you'll always be that way there's no help for you and that just feeds into that mind which feeds into that posture. God's wanting to see a people that's in a posture of praise. Psalms 150 says, Praise you, the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the ferment of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud-sounding cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. He told the woman at the well, who had a lot of issues, had a lot of storylines, been married a bunch of times, and the one she was married, was with, she was not married to. The Lord knew all about all of that. But he said, I didn't come for that, but I've come to tell you that this time, the time is coming, and now is that true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. What was he saying? He said, I'm giving you another chance because that was right after he asked her question, where's your husband? I don't have a husband. And you've said right. You've had five of them. And the one that you're with now is not your husband. And then he comes in he said, listen, True worshiper is going to worship God in spirit and truth. What is he saying? You want to hold to that story? You want to keep holding on to that story? Sister Gilda, if you'll come and help me close. This is where I want to close this morning. You want to keep your story? I want a lawyer. <laughs> I, I, I plead the fifth. Or yeah, I'm sticking to that. Because he said their time's coming and now is when true worshipers will worship me in spirit and truth. Do you want to stick to your story? What's more important to you? Sticking to your story? Sticking to your posture? Sticking to your way of doing things? Sticking to your lifestyle? Or saying, I want to be a true worshiper. I'm ready to change my posture. I'm ready to go from this. I'm ready to surrender all. I'm ready to submit all. The psalmist asks itself those questions in our text, but then in Psalms 121 we find some statements that you need to make to yourself this morning if you're ready to change your posture. Verse, Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Many people look for help. I've heard people ask, well, where was God when this was happening? Where was God when I was being abused? Where was God? We've all asked that question. Even as a seasoned preacher, a youth pastor, I ask that question. When I'm standing there in the police station in Brunswick, Georgia, my mom committed suicide. I ask God that question. God, where was you? Where was you? God didn't answer me in the police station, Sister Mosley. He didn't answer me there in my bitterness. He didn't answer me there in my struggle. But He did answer me. I was riding my lawnmower around the yard, cutting grass. Because on my lawnmower, I didn't have to listen to any outside noise. Didn't have to answer any phone calls. Didn't have to answer any questions. I just drove in circles around my yard. 
Sister Debbie, God spoke to me there on that lawnmower, and he said, son, you asked me where I was at. I said, yeah, Lord, I did. I was pretty upset. I asked you where you were at. He said, I'm where I've always been. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm loving, I'm gracious, and I'm merciful. And then he told me this, Brother George. He said, something else I want to tell you. Don't worry about your mom because she's where I am. You know what I began to do? No, 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 Lord. She committed suicide. Your scripture says, me beginning to preach to God about what scripture says. There's no way heard that audible voice of God so much that I looked to see who snuck up behind me was talking to me who jumped on the back of the saddle if you will of my lawnmower was riding with me talking in my ear he said I'm telling you she's here with me and I had to rewind back to that police station because it was a fog that day when that police officer looked at me and God did this he remind, rewinded it in my mind while well, I'm cutting grass and that scene that he unfolded that I didn't think much of when I was there in that police station. But he said, your mom was leaning over the tub, had the water on. And then in the police station, I said, so what? But when God took it back to my memory, it was just like I was standing there in that kitchen many years before when mom looked at me and she said, I was trying to witness to her, Kyle. I was trying to tell her she needed to come to the Lord and serve the Lord. And this, this was her, her moment of fighting against it. So I've heard that my whole life. So I heard that my whole life. I'm like, why am I having this conversation? Why am I going through this? Why am I, why am I casting my pearl before swine? Why am I wasting my time? Because she's got a rebuttal to everything. That conversation was for a reason. That conversation was not for the 15-year-old boy that was standing there trying to witness to his backslid mom. That conversation was for the 30-something-year-old man who just found out that his mom had done what she did. Because God immediately took me back to that moment when she said, when I was 19 years old, I was saved. I taught Sunday school. Okay, God, why are you reminding me of this? He said, she knew of my mercy, son. She knew of my grace. And then he took me back to the thief on the cross. I don't know why I'm saying all of this this morning. But he took me back to the thief on the cross. He said, in that moment, my grace was sufficient. He said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. I'm having a conversation with God, but all that while, I've got myself in that posture again, but then I'm like, not quite there yet. Still reaching, within reach to reach for something. I said, Lord, if I go preaching this and go telling this to people, they're going to get on their defenses. And God just began to talk to me more and more he talked. higher those hands went because God began to, to show me he didn't have to tell me this but he began to show it and tell me he said your mom was doing what she was doing there she was over that tub because she was trying to reverse God didn't say this to me he just revealing this to me to, to my mind she was trying to reverse what she did don't you think if she was trying to reverse what she did physically that she knew what she needed to do in her dying moment spiritually my grace is sufficient for you some say that was an awful posture to be in hung over the tub taking her last breath but it was a lot better posture of laying in the bed with the covers pulled up than have done what I've done that was her posture of praise. She 
You say, preacher, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. <laughs> I don't care what you believe. Because I know that I was in a posture of praise when God gave that to me. And I'm telling you, we think, man, this is what it is. Running the backs of the pews is praise. That is, I love it. I love those moments. With my mom, her posture of praise with her dying breath hanging over the side of a tub. I had no idea I was going this route this morning. For someone, their posture of praise could be just pulling over on the side of the road with a grip on a steering wheel so frustrated that they just let go of the steering wheel. Say, I'm done. I'm done fighting, Lord. Here am I. Kyle, I remember your posture of praise. I remember that posture. He was just wandering around at the front of Howard Road. He didn't know what to do that morning. He's just up there wandering around. I'm like, what's he doing? Said, Kyle, come here, buddy. What's wrong? He looked at me with tears in his eyes, didn't you? He said, Brother Jamie, I'm ready. I didn't say, what are you ready for? I knew what he was ready for. I said, well, come here. Right here. Right here. He knelt down. I knelt down beside him. And we began to pray. So his posture of praise looked something like this. I'm not telling you no lie. And his wife that was how many eight months pregnant at the time? I don't know if she's seen her husband wandering around the church wondering what's he doing. But something got a hold of her heart there that morning. I don't know what their lives was before that. But all I know is that eight month pregnant woman, somehow she was pregnant. That child was big. She's worked her way. I didn't realize this until I got up and looked back and several women were surrounded around Hillary as she had worked her way down to her knees. That eight-month pregnant body. There fall across that chair. That chair became that altar. You know what that was? That was a posture change. And I don't know what your posture is, and I hope they'll forgive me for using them as examples. I remember Brother Steve's posture change. I think I still got a cracked rib from it. He couldn't get out of that seat quick enough. Grabbed me, bear hugged me there that night when God saved him. Posture change. A posture change. For each one of you, you've got that moment. You can think of that moment, that salvation experience, that time when your posture changed. The circumstances of life have come since then. And once again, your posture has changed. And all of a sudden, just like that youth pastor there on that lawnmower. Hold on, I'm going to fight this. I'm not going to accept that. Why? Because I reach for bitterness. That's what I reach for. I don't know what you've reached for, but some of you have reached for something besides God. And it's caused you to get in that posture that poisoned your whole life. God's looking this morning for you to say, I'm ready to change my posture. Whatever your posture looks like right now, whatever your defenses are, as you stand with me this morning, as you stand with me all over this house, I don't know what posture you've put yourself in. I don't know what posture circumstances have put you in. I don't know what posture rebellion has put you in, bad decisions have put you in, somebody else's decision has put you in. But you know it's not the posture that you need to be in because it's not a posture of praise. I want you to line up right here. Right down this aisle right here. Step out quickly. Don't waste any time. You're not in that posture that you can receive from God. You're in a posture that you're arguing with God, that you're questioning God, that you're doubting God, that you're fearing you're in a posture that all you can think about is the sickness posture says things are never going to change in a posture saying it's always going to be like that just line up right behind Ashley all the way down that aisle to that those double doors if you have to your posture is not going to change if you stay in your seat your posture is going to change
Would you begin to say, I'm ready for my posture to change? Say, Brother Jamie, I'm, I'm good. I'm in a posture of praise. I need your help this morning. I need your help this morning. Brother Tyler, just push those altars up against those in that front row for me. I need you in one of two places this morning. I need you in that line, or I need you in this line. If you're in a posture of praise, I need you to line up on this side and this side facing each other. I don't have a house full of preachers, so I need your help. If you're in the right posture, I need you to come. Brother Tyler's on this side. I need some on this side facing the ones that are on that side. Sister Moza, can you come and sit right here, sis? If you can't stand, come and sit right here on these, these altars or these front rows. If you want to be a part of this. You're in a good posture. I need your help. But you're saying, I'm not in a great posture right now, but I don't want to leave here like I came. I want you in that line. How many believes there's still power in the blood of Jesus? Sister Joyce, just take some of that oil, pass it down. Just pass it, pass it all the way down. Everybody in that line, get some oil on your hands. If you're in this line this morning, I want you to just change your posture. What did I tell you you needed to do? Change that posture. Don't reach for an excuse. Don't reach for doubt. Don't reach for fear. Don't oppose what God wants to do. But lift both those hands right now in faith. If you're in that line, if you can't lift both those hands in faith, get out of the line and get back in it when you can. But if you're in this line this morning, say, I'm changing my posture. Well, that's mean, Brother Jamie. No, that's help. Are you ready this morning? If you're going to lay hands on somebody, make sure you're in the right posture. Make sure that you don't need to be in that line if you're in this line. I want you to check yourselves this morning because this is business for the King. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I believe breakthrough is coming for somebody this morning. I believe somebody's going to change their approach. Somebody's going to change their walk. Not just ones in this line, but God's wanting to do something in your life as you begin to pray for others. Do you believe it right now? Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, as I begin to anoint and pray for these, and they begin to go through this line and make their way into this altar, I believe you to do a mighty work in this place today, God. That you touch us, that we would get into a posture of praise. This will be a moment that our posture changes, that our approach changes, because our focus and our destination will change in this moment. We believe it right now in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. If you're in this line, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to anoint you and I'm going to pray for you. But I want you to slowly walk through this line with those hands raised. Make your way all the way through that line. Give them a way out at the end. Whoever's at the end of the line, you may have to guide them. But I want you to guide them over that way. Don't fall down and bury your head in the carpet. Don't fall down and bury your head in the front pew. We keep those hands up, keep that head lifted up, and say, God, I'm ready for a posture change. I'm ready for a posture, I'm ready for a change of attitude, a change of approach, a change of everything. I'm believing that, God, you're going to do it. I couldn't do it, but you can. And if you're in this line, your position uh, is to lay hands on everybody that prays uh, and just keep them moving through that line because there's several that wants to get through this line today, several that wants a posture change and get them over here in these altars. Are we ready? Lift those hands one more time. Let's tell God. If you're in that line, you go ahead and tell God what you need right now. If you're in this line, say, God, anoint me. Use me. That that helped me change my posture will help them change their posture. 